On this page of notes, we're going to look at the basic concept of now representing the movement of an object graphically. Now, a couple things are very important for us to understand about how we are going to do this. The first thing that we need to make sure we focus on is that we are still only talking about one-dimensional movement. So, movement on the x-axis only and we are plotting that x-axis movement on the y-axis. So here I have it bolded in. Please make sure you get this in a nice marked out manner in your notes. X goes on the y-axis because we reserve time for the x-axis. We'll see why we do that in a moment, but please make sure you put down here that time will always go on the x-axis. Always, always, always. And position will go on the y-axis. So the actual movement is, is not happening in this, this upwards fashion shown. So let's, let's take a look at movement two here quickly. So let's take a look at movement two. Uh, let me use a different color. I'm going to use blue. So we're looking here at movement two. So at time t equals zero, we're at position zero. So time zero, position zero. One second later, position plus five. One second later, position plus ten, and so on. So we go down, we just plot it out as we're given. So that's movement two. So that looks like we're going kind of uphill. We are not going uphill at all. We were moving only on the x-axis. After one second, at position plus 5 on the x-axis, plus 10 on the x-axis, plus 15, plus 20, plus 25. So we just move to the right on the x-axis. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we are doing this because, as it shows here in the annotations, when we look at the slope of a secant line, a line that intersects the function in two points, we get the average velocity. We get the average velocity because we, we have constructed the graph to force us to get the average velocity. We've contrived it. So there's no, no grand mathematical theory as to why the, the slope of the secant line has to be the average velocity. It's the average velocity because of the way we've constructed the graph, and we've constructed the graph purposefully to match the equation such that when we plot x on the y-axis, and look at delta x, as it says here, we get a rise. When we look at the x-axis, and we've plotted time on it, when we look at delta t, we get a run. So from math, we know that represents the slope of our line, which is, in this case, a secant because it intersects our function at two points. So this is going to be really important for us in terms of understanding uh, mathematical representations of positions versus uh, time movements. And to give you kind of a look ahead as to what we can do with this, the one thing we can do with it is actually compare average velocities over different time intervals without making any calculations whatsoever. So let me show you how that works. Let's take a look at, at movement one. So movement one is going to be, let me do that in my purple here. Movement 1 is my purple. So at time t equals 0, we're at position 0. At time 1 second, we're at position positive 1. And then at position positive 4 after 2 seconds, positive 9, positive 16, positive 25. Well, how can we compare average velocities over these intervals without making any calculations? Well, that's where the slope of our secant line comes in to help us out. Let's look at the average velocity from time one second to two seconds. We would put in the secant line. We could actually calculate the slope of that line, but we don't have to. Just let it sit there. We're just going to look at that in more detail in a moment. We'll talk about it again in a moment. How about the average velocity from four to five seconds? Let's put in that secant line. Well, that line is going to be connected, connecting those two points. 
And now if we look at the slopes, what do we know? Well, even without making a calculation, I know this is a steeper slope. What does a steeper slope mean? It means a bigger value. It means a larger average velocity. And what's more, it's a positively valued slope. So remember the, the slopes, positive slope up and to the right. And the negative slopes, well, we'll see those in other problems, will be uh, down and to the right. But the positive slope tells me it's going in the positive x direction on average with this steeper slope, this bigger value than my positive average velocity here, but a shallower, right? So a smaller slope value. Smaller slope value. So the, the notion of these graphs and our ability to just quickly kind of glance at them and either draw in, hand draw in, uh, secant lines and think about the slopes as being shallow or steep or if there's zero slope I know there's zero average velocity. So very important uh, tool for us to be able to utilize to be able to quickly say what an object is doing without making these calculations. So take a moment. Uh, I'm going to leave the, the video here. You can pause it to get your annotations down on this page and we'll look at a specific example. Uh, on our next page of notes.